Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for being here today, uh, Director Ray. We appreciate testifying for this committee again. Um, you've, of course, also already referred to the review of the so-called crossfire hurricane investigation by Inspector General, <coughs> excuse me, Michael Horowitz. And as you know, the uh, Inspector General reported serious flaws and overreach by the FBI in the application process to surveil Carter Page. Uh, who at the time was a foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign. While the review did not conclude that your predecessor or any of his agents were politically motivated, the way that they went about obtaining these FISA warrants uh, was at the time and continues to be uh, deeply concerning uh, to many people. <coughs> Excuse me. Given that there's an election less than a year away, um, it seems to me that significant changes need to occur uh, to address past uh, FISA application abuses by the FBI, uh, and you've referred to them to some degree already. Um, what are some of the changes that you're implementing uh, that will help to ensure that politically motivated agencies and attorneys are unable to pursue FISA applications uh, with unverified, uncorroborated, or even downright false information? Well, Congressman, thank you for the question. Uh, I, too, was deeply concerned by what I read in the Inspector General's report. Uh, and as I've said, I consider it to have described conduct that I consider unacceptable and unrepresentative of the FBI that I know. Now, there are a number of things that uh, I think go to addressing those concerns. Uh, and I'll just name a few of them here. I will say it starts with tone at the top. I have been communicating unambiguously in field office after field office, headquarters division after headquarters division, that how we do what we do matters. That the American people expect the FBI not just to get to the right result, but to go about it in the right way. And so I've been pounding process, process, process everywhere I go, and I've put in place a whole new leadership team that is helping me amplify that message. Second, we've put in place a whole number of, and they get kind of technical, but a whole number of process and policy changes that go both to our use of FISA, but also to our use of things like confidential human sources and those kind of things and how those get incorporated into the FISA process. We put in place new training. I put in place last summer, uh, actually over 18 months ago, a training that did not exist before uh, all focused on not just avoiding bias, but avoiding even the appearance of bias. And I started, and this is important, I started by requiring all the top people. It's not the way government usually works. <laughs> I started by requiring everybody at the top of the house, all 200 and plus SES folks in the Bureau, to come in to Quantico for a full day to get coached on that by judges, the Inspector General, and others trying to set again the tone, the idea that it starts at the top. I've put in place training that didn't exist before, policies that didn't exist before, processes that didn't exist before, oversight that didn't exist before, uh, and where there are people who are still left, most of whom are effectively at the line level, or at least were at the time of the Inspector General report, they've been referred to our Office of Professional Responsibility, which is our disciplinary arm. Thank, thank you, Mr. Director. I'd like to get one more question, and hopefully get you time to answer it. Mr. Director, the President uh, signed into law the Fix Nix Act, and I think you mentioned that earlier, in March 2018 to help close reporting gaps in the National Instant uh, Criminal Background Check System, commonly referred to as Nix. Um, having access to accurate records is critical to ensuring that missing records or access to those records doesn't put the lives of innocent men, women, and children at risk. Uh, just a few months ago in November, the Attorney General released a report detailing improvements in the NICS system since the enactment of this important legislation uh, based on preliminary data. But instead of highlighting and building upon the improvements detailed in that report, unfortunately, this committee spent a considerable amount of time trying to impeach the President. In light of the reported results, uh, what can Congress do to help build upon those efforts to keep individuals who should not possess firearms from obtaining them? Well, I, I think the Fix Nix Act was a very important step forward. Uh, and at the end of the day, we all share the goal of trying to keep guns out of the hands of those prohibited by law from possessing them. And that's what our Nix examiners uh, do every day. And we have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of Nix checks uh, that we have to do all the time. 
uh, and making sure that we have accurate and complete records in the next system is critical to making that happen. And that's why I think the statute was such a step in the right direction. Uh, so we continue to march forward on that effort. Obviously, resources to our folks out at, at the Knicks uh, shop would be very much appreciated. I've actually gone out there myself uh, and put on the headset and listened so that I can actually experience firsthand what those calls look like so that I can actually feel and experience it and not just observe it from some conference room in D.C. Uh, so they do very, very important work. And again, I thank the Congress for the Fixed Knicks Act. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My time has expired.